I'm just about to do something kind of dangerous. You want to help? But before I can even begin, I gotta go buy a hot plate. First off, I think we found one. This is the best part of having a service dog, is getting them to choose their own toys. Happy? Now that we've got our hot plate, let me tell you what we're doing today. This little jar contains some of the gold specimens that I have panned over the last six years. And in this container, we have some specimens that I've detected over the last couple of weeks. There are a couple of ways that you can remove gold from specimens like that. If you watch any of my recent episodes, you'll know you can put large specimens in a fire. Which makes the quartz very brittle. And easier to smash up with a tool like Stampy. Bye bye! And whilst that might be a very easy and convenient way to extract gold from quartz, it tends to squish and damage the specimen gold. So how do you remove gold from quartz without damaging the gold structure? You could use a smelting process, but again, that's going to liquefy the gold and damage the gold. Or you could use hydrofluoric acid. I think that's how you pronounce it. Either way, an incredibly dangerous acid and hard to get. Or like today, you could use caustic soda which, whilst dangerous, is nowhere near as dangerous as most of the other options we have. I say dangerous, but I really mean hazardous. We're going to boil the quartz in liquid caustic soda. And for obvious reasons, we're going to be using things like respirators. You want to make sure you have a high percentage caustic soda. This is 98% pure. SUS 304 is code for stainless steel, and we want a stainless steel container. I've got another stainless steel bowl here just to put on top of our container when it's boiling. And I'll be using black nitrile gloves, which are the chemical resistant gloves. And by the end of this, we should have specimen gold pieces that are undamaged with all or most of the quartz removed. I'm very excited to see what happens to pieces like this because the structure of the gold looks so interesting through that rock and I wanna know if it's one solid piece all connected or multiple little bits like those bits in there. I got the gloves on, goggles. I even got past the child proof lock, look at that. I am not gonna need very much of this. I need enough in the bottom to cover my specimens. So we're gonna put about a centimeter's worth down there. That's probably a little too much. Before I add water to the caustic soda and start the chemical reaction, which is going to be quite exothermic, we are going to put our specimens in there and make sure that we have enough caustic soda in there to cover them. Perfect. Le water. Now we do not need to make it liquidy, we need to make a paste. So we're just gonna add a little bit of water, swirl it around, and we just want those crystals to dissolve. I reckon we've actually probably got enough water in there. It's my plant's lucky day. We need that to reach a temperature of over 300 degrees Celsius. The small hot plate apparently reaches 320 degrees on setting four. We're going to put this on top of it just to stop any splatter. And once it comes to a boil, we're going to let the caustic soda do its thing for about an hour. Think goes without saying, other than PPE, you want to be doing that in a well-ventilated area. So I'm going to let that thing chill out for the next hour or so, and then we'll check back and see if we have pure gold with no quartz on it. Hey, I can't feel... I can't feel any rock in there. <laughs> What a travesty, $34 ruined. Which is precisely why I bought the $34 one and not the $100 one they tried to sell me. It's just turned into a brown, sticky, disgusting goo. We're gonna have to flush all that with a ton of water. Well, we're about to find out whether or not we have um, gold or not. And there is a really cool thing going on at the bottom of this stainless steel jug right now. See that blob? That blob is dissolved quartz and gold and it's stuck fast to the very bottom of the pot and I can't get it off. Oh, and there's a whole bunch more on the other side. So I'm hazarding a guess what's in our pan is going to be really good. That is future Chris's problem. Now listen real carefully and you can hear something rattling at the bottom. This wheelbarrow is filled with ore tailings, so we're going to dissolve whatever remains of any kind of caustic soda in this. Or dilute it, should I say? Oh my god. Oh my god, that works so well. There is so much gold in there. I'm used to seeing specimens all smashed up. Look at that. I have never done this before. 
And what I'm seeing is a real solid result. Look at that! Oh my God, those big specimens that I was really curious about getting out whole. Wow. I'm just gonna flush this with a bunch more water. Welcome to Australia where I had a family of spiders living in my hose. So that's a thing that happens here. That is the same specimen I showed you at the start with all the rock on it and I wanted to know if the gold was connected in it. That is the most spectacular way to recover gold out of quartz that I have ever seen. Literally no damage at all to the structure of the gold. It just got rid of the quartz. I think my goal now is to go find more specimens just like this one and make some really cool show pieces. Any way you cut it, that is a fantastic result. Hopefully this technique helps some of you guys out there create amazing display pieces of your gold finds. Let me know how you go in the comments below. Until next time, give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Peace, and I'm out.